everybody, and welcome back to We Bought a Mic for Good Mic Hunting, a show within the show on the films of Mr. Robin Williams. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Uh, we've got our red noses on figuratively. Yeah. Not physically. Of course. Um, and blame, blame Walgreens for us not having red noses right now. Blame Walgreens for a lot of issues in the world of privatized. We might healthcare. talk about Walgreens specifically in this episode as, as time goes on. Uh, amongst other things, discussing Patch Adams with Mr. Brian Adams. Welcome to the show. Guys, doing? good to see you. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Happy to be here and be a part of the Robin Williams series. Um, Patch Adams was a special movie to me growing up. So happy to be here for it. We're glad to have the patron saint, the executive producer of We Bought a Mic here today. The sugar daddy, episode. the sugar father. I mean, <laughs> uh, this is one to tune in on YouTube so you can see Brian's background. Um, <laughs> it is a, a screen cap of the film. If you haven't seen this movie before and you're just now tuning in, you're like, I is this did Brian construct this behind him right now? What am I what am I seeing here? Uh, welcome, Ginos, at your cervix. My name's Ernest. Um, you know. This week, we just got to get back to basics, guys. And I'm Dr. Hunter Patch Mobley. Dr. Hunter Patch Adams Mobley. Patch Adams Mobley. Well, you know, honestly, Brian, if we just combine our bodies together, we become Patch Adams. You become Robin Williams. We become Hunter Adams. We're, we're there. We got it. We are so close. <laughs> we're so close. Let's have a kid. He'd have very hairy forearms just to say he would be Robin Williams. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I brought, I shaved my face in honor of Robin uh, today, but I... Naturally, I, that kid would be looking like a, <laughs> looking very ape like, much like Robin Williams. Absolutely. So, Brian, you're a, a longtime supporter, donor of the pod. We're very gracious, very fortunate um, to have you be our, our sugar daddy, sugar father. And because of your contributions to the show, we're sporting uh, brand new headsets today. Shout out to all the other donors. These these weren't cheap. They now, weren't expensive, though. They're not like the fancy ones. Here's, we don't care about Dane or Brent or any of those other faceless donors. Right now, we're here to talk about Brian. And thank you personally, Brian, and no one else for these headphones. Also, a couple other things. I don't know if you noticed this, but I got us a little decoration here. We have um, a We Bought a Mic logo on a stand here. And our guy, Robin, with his boys, his wow, Southie boys, look at that. Damon and Benny Affleck with their little gold man statues, Academy Award winners, so they can join us here on the show. My favorite Boston boys. Wow. What? That's so nice. Look at that. Yeah. Look at you, Ernie, doing the most. Sprucing, sprucing things up here. I'm just here for the free beer, really. That's that's what I show up. I mean, for. you you paid for the beer today. I did pay so. for the beer today, so that's that's on me. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, just trying to spruce up the studio here. Uh, there, you know, there's a lot of wires, there's a lot of electricity, but we can uh, we can keep the the visuals going with uh, with some of these things. So if you have yet to tune in to the video version, this might be this might be the reason why. I also have the Patch Adams DVD mm -hmm. here. You know, look at that, Brian. Got the Patch Adams DVD here. Collector's so, edition. So I do want to ask a question, Ernest, because uh, I know we we share a, a We Bought a Mic email account. And I know for a fact that you paid to <laughs> rent Patch Adams on VOD. $3.99, so correct. You, but you own a copy of Patch Adams on DVD. So you, you actually had the physical disc mm -hmm. already in your possession that was just free. Mm -hmm. And yet you did decide to buy the video on demand for an extra five dollars well we we didn't want to experience patch adams in standard def it oh. needed to be experienced in in hd and also i forgot that i owned it oh cool okay there we go <laughs> all right that makes sense uh do you own this dvd brian do you own a copy i don't of man i actually had to rent it how long have you had that for i have no idea 
it, it, it just wandered onto my shelf. Like, I, I mean, how long has water existed? Really? Right. Like kind of the question there. Look, look at this. This is, this has a whole fold out. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's nice. See, I'm, you would never get that fold out from your digital movies. Uh, so for, for the listeners at home that we have a, a full, like four page fold out that has, uh, a screenshot of, of Robin Williams looking off into the Blue Ridge Mountains. Um, and then it's signed by director Tom Shadfak. <laughs> Shadyak. <laughs> with a collage yeah. of uh, behind the scenes pictures from the set. Uh, also on the back, we have the chapter organization in case you're like going through scene selections. Yeah. Uh, I do want to ask, uh, Ernest, you are vamping like way more than you normally do before we get into this movie. And I'm worried about what your thoughts are on Patch Adams based on just the sheer amount of foreplay that you are doing before we actually talk about the movie itself. It's, it, it says uh, Academy Award winner uh, Robin Williams. On Not the for box. this movie. Not for this movie. But no. he wants you to know. Well, OK, so this might be a good place to start. So this is his follow up to winning an Oscar. Like that's sometimes that's a good measurement of tracking like awards is what do they do after mm -hmm. what do they do after they get the little gold man? Yep. So in, in Cage's case, he was like he could have been an Oscar type actor, done more character pieces. And he's like, nah, fuck it. I'm going to make some 90s action movies now. Like that's he went the complete opposite way. Yeah. And Robin did Patch Adams it, <laughs> to kind of kind of playing the Robin Williams hits a little bit. Yeah. So I, it's it's tough to kind of break this one apart because this movie was a massive hit. It, it was like, what, two hundred million dollars at the box office, which is insane for yeah. a movie like this um, on a 50 to 90 million dollar estimated budget. Wide range there, but OK. Um, I mean, Robin's salary alone was probably 20 mil. Minimum. Um, actually, I have a direct thing about robin williams salary oh you a direct bit the, with the real life patch yeah. adams um so a little bit of background for people who don't know patch adams is a real life person he is a real doctor um he opened up a i'm spoilers for real life guys uh he opened up a nonprofit hospital that's still in operation today um and he saw this movie whenever it came out in 1998 and he told Roger Ebert, I fucking hated that. That's a direct quote uh, from the real life Patch Adams. And about the movie, he said, uh, speaking about Robin Williams, he made $21 million for four months of pretending to be me in a very simplistic fashion and did not give $10 to my free hospital. Patch Adams, the person, would have, if I had Robin's money, given all $21 million to this free hospital or given all $21 million to a free hospital in a country where 80 million cannot get care. Damn, Patch. So Patch has got beef with this movie. Shit. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Hey, Patch is a good dude, which um, in real life, I didn't do a ton of research on the backstory. I didn't really watch this since the first time when I was a kid. And I guess one thing not to spoil, I don't really know, um, Monica Potter in it, I guess in real life, wasn't a woman or a love interest. It was his best friend. OK, so we'll yeah, we'll, um, we'll save that. Detail. It's almost like, why does that exist? Uh, we'll we'll yeah. save that detail for a little later, because that's a very crucial plot point that honestly kind of shook me to my core a little bit. Um, but yes, we'll put a, a pit in that because that that's a whole can of worms there that we'll have to get into. But let's let's back up a little bit and just share overall thoughts. What, what did you think of this movie, Brian? I mean, you picked this movie when I reached out to you about the series. Um, tell us like why you picked it. What are some of your thoughts about Robin in general? And then your thoughts on the movie now revisiting it. I've always been a big Robin Williams fan. Um, even re-listening to the episodes you guys have done. I loved um, Fern Goalie, I watched a lot as a kid, burned the uh, VHS to shreds. <laughs> really, this movie specifically, I remembered it being a lot better. Um, looked up the ratings, I think the 22%. And I've got a habit of on Rotten Tomatoes, remembering, yeah. yeah, dude, I thought it would have been like in the 70s, but a lot of people don't like this movie. 
And I just can't get past the heart of it all. And I love the cast, which we'll get to that too. But honestly, I just love the approach to healthcare and leading with kindness and just getting corny, but everything about Patch Adams, the guy, or Hunter Adams. So the real life guy, I bet I'd get along with pretty well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the movie is not as good as I remember. It's it's a little stinky doo doo. <laughs> I I, I, I described it. I described it in my letterbox review as the cinematic equivalent of liking the smell of your own farts, which like it's funny, it's, right? Like farts are funny, but they also smell bad. So it's like it, uh, watching this movie, especially in the first half, I could really, really see why it was such a massive hit because here mm. comes Robin Williams. He has an Oscar under his belt. The man has been already in some of the highest highs that any actor in Hollywood could ask for. And what they essentially let him do in this movie is just go epic mode. He gets to just riff. There's entire sequences in this movie where he is just doing bits. Mm -hmm. He's just doing his Robin thing with actual patients, with actual like make a wish cancer kids. And you can't help but like smile and, and yeah. bring a little tear to your eye when you see that it's incredibly effective. But then the second half of the movie happens and that's when the farts stop being funny <laughs> and they become a little bit stinky. I, I, so I think that this movie really has kind of a character problem to it at its core. Like there's, cause you know, you're right, Brian. Like, there is a lot of this movie that's very emblematic of this era of 90s family movies that just, like, sit there. They just kind of bring a smile to your face. There's some, like, nice lightheartedness. Especially, the movie takes a little bit to get going. Um, the, opening oh, sequence, the, the, opening. I, the opening sequence, I would describe it as One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest on Ambien. Yeah, um, it's is, atrocious. It's, it's bad. It's... I thought that that was the way that this movie started. I don't think I'd seen this movie. If I, if I ever did see it, I was really young. I don't think I don't, I'd ever seen it. I don't know if I'd I didn't ever remember seen the any whole of it. thing. Um, and at first, whenever I saw the opening sequence, I was like, oh, boy, this is going to age like fucking milk. It's if we're going to spend the whole time in this mental institution, this is not going to go great. Yeah. Luckily, Patch, Patch Adams decides to check into a mental institution because he's like aimless and depressed. Yeah. He's suicidal. Yeah. And that's once we get past that and we get into the kids stuff, it really does inject a lot of life into this movie. It's fun. It's fun. Until it's just like not fun anymore. <laughs> and the movie just kind of like, I don't know. There's reached a point where I was like, God, there's still 45 minutes <laughs> left in this thing. Like, why is everything so serious now? Like I was having fun with just Robin just doing bits and like yeah. still passing all of his classes and everything else. Um, I could see why the real Patch Adams was pissed about this movie because it makes you like. Watching this movie, you're like, is Patch Adams actually cheating on his tests? Like, he kind of seems like <laughs> they he's never, stupid. They never show him studying. Yeah, he kind of seems like he's a fucking bumbling idiot. <laughs> like, and he just, but he loves people. So I guess we like him. Um, yeah, so just kind of to summarize a little bit, the, the story is, yeah, he, he checks into this mental institution. He doesn't really know where his life is going. He's depressed and suicidal. And he figures out that the, the patient's, um, at this men mental institution are they, they give him like a reason to live. He, he figures out that by having fun and laughing, um, it, it, it is more, it cures them more so than the actual treatment. And then he decides that he's going to become a doctor. And that's when it's already, you're starting to scratch your head a little bit. And lo and behold, you look at the Wikipedia and the actual, the real Patch Adams, that's not what happened. He went to medical school right after high school, like a normal person <laughs> and got a degree in medicine, like so a normal person. So you're saying he wasn't like 20, 25 years older than everyone else in the <laughs> school. It's almost like that was only written in there because we wanted to get late nineties Robin Williams yeah. <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> yeah, we fast forward two years. He's, you know, I guess finishing medical school uh, unclear how much progress he has made, but throughout the course of the movie, it's like getting close to graduation and 
you know, getting ready to graduate medical school. Um, what? Oh, wait, no, he doesn't. He he's a first year student at medical school. He goes to regular school, doesn't he? It says it fast forwards two years, right, Brian? Like that's the title card. Yeah. After the mental institution, it picks up like his first year at med school. And then there's like a time jump to third year. But oh, then there's it's like, a time jump. Mm -hmm. But he does show up there with like grades and uh, reports from a university. I just don't remember. OK, I, I pulled up huh. the timeline here. So he I don't think he ever graduated regular college in this story. This isn't real life. This is just <laughs> in the context of the movie. So he goes to regular school and two after two years, he graduates regular college. He does enroll uh, two years later. He enrolls in the Medical College of Virginia. So like he is a first year medical student for the duration of this movie. That's why he keeps getting in trouble with going around the patients. Yeah, but, but you can't go around the patients unless you're a third year student. At the end, he graduates. Like there's the whole thing about well, there's graduation. There's a time jump at the very end, but that's like uh, after he gets read, readmitted to the school. And okay. Stuff. Anyway, timeline, I, timeline aside, what happens is there's a back and forth conflict with him trying to go against the grain and trying to treat patients with laughter, with jokes, with bits, props, and <laughs> and what you McCulloch's and who Milo, who <laughs> what you who's a what's it who's a what's it <laughs> boner jokes and inflatables, <laughs> fuck science. Yeah, Fuck, um, like medicine. Yeah, honestly, like if you're, I want to go to like cancer patients. <laughs> And just be like, actually, we did take away your chemotherapy, but it's okay because like I'm gonna like honk, honk. I'm gonna do a bit in front of you. I'm gonna do like Dane Cook stand up on, and that'll that'll cure your cancer. <laughs> but I mean, that being said, like, come on, Brian, that scene with the cancer kids, like, that's why this movie made 200 mil at the box office, right? Yeah, I mean, a lot of those first scenes are also all the ones that are on YouTube, and it's like the first. 35 minutes of the movie and then you get so much of the med school and then there's the you know the old guy that said he liked to hunt safari or something and they simulate <laughs> shooting animals and then it's that like i fun. needed I... that boys <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i'm ready to die now <laughs> I love oh. that scene. I love uh, the old woman who just she's like, my fantasy is to be in a pool of noodles. And the whole time, I'm like, you're insane. Like, you are a <laughs> senile person right now. And it pays off. It does pay off. Um, <laughs> that was crazy. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I will sure. say, flashing back. Um, it's the first time that we actually see Robin like realize that he likes to have fun with people. I did really like him uh, bonding with his uh, roommate at the mental institution over the imaginary squirrels. Yeah, that's a nice little fun scene. I was so I don't interrogate it too much and ask like what mental illness any of these people have or seems to be a like recurring uh, um, issue in a lot of the, these Robin. Yeah, movies. just like don't think about <laughs> the context of the movie. Yeah, that God, that prologue or whatever you want to call it. I was so out just off the jump. I was like, what the fuck are we doing? This is ridiculous. The writing was so terrible. Oh, which reminds me, I did want to point this out. OK, so a little bit of like the 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 creative team um, behind this film. It's it's, it's kind of a big cast like it makes sense that this was a big deal now this made 200 million dollars like this is it's not just robin coming off the oscar well before before we get to the cast real quick um it's directed by um i mentioned his name earlier tom, tom shadiak shadiak so this guy directed films such as ace ventura pet detective the nutty professor liar liar like those are funny movies and three like big box office hits. Yeah. Like they were just like beloved by audiences and a lot of like critics and everything at the time. Like this is, this guy's, he's doing some then, stuff. Then he went on to do Bruce Almighty and Evan Almighty after this. Um, this guy, like he's got experience making really funny movies. And the, the fascinating thing is it was written by uh, Steve Odekirk. Not Odenkirk. Um, <laughs> who wrote and directed Ace Ventura 2 when nature calls. So there's are you big, are you big Ace Ventura 2 head? Th there's a there's a 
there's like a um, oh he also wrote the nutty the nutty professor and the nutty professor too colon the clumps <laughs> um well no i don't think he wrote that one but he has credit on it um oh my god he also wrote jimmy neutron boy genius yo hey now okay Holy way to bury shit. the fucking lead okay and bruce almighty okay so they're like a team, Tom and Steve. They yeah, go on was, to like work together a few different times. It, it, I watched this movie with Lee, and she did pick up on some Ace Ventura energy in a couple of scenes. So their their fingerprints, uh, you know, their comedy fingerprints are on this thing. The problem is that this movie is not a comedy. That's the problem. It has comedic scenes. It has a lot of really effective comedic moments. I'm looking at one on Brian's background right now. Like it has good bits, right? But I don't think you can really call this movie a true and true comedy. Um, maybe the reason why it was such a big hit is because A, Robin Williams is a comedian and he's allowed to do comedy in the movie. Um, and B, it's just a sign of the times and you know, kind of what people wanted from movies back in 1998. But I think that as far as the creative team goes, they kind of ran into a little bit of a wall with the direction that this story takes because it gets really serious and kind of dark. And with like the based on a true story of it all, it feels like they wanted to pay like too much homage to it in some ways and like right. maybe fuzz the facts in other ways that weren't really necessary. Um, just kind of feels like that. I mean, Ace Ventura, Nutty Professor, Bruce Almighty. Those are original stories, at least original ideas, not based on historical figures. No, Ace Ventura is a historical figure. Yeah, of course, the pet detective. Yeah, um, it's, yeah. He investigates pets. So, Brian, I want to ask, like, you said that you watched this movie as a kid. Was this, like, a VHS that you owned? Was this, like, a movie that you saw in the theaters in 98? Like, what's what's your relationship with this? Like, going back to whenever you first saw it. Yeah, well, my grandma would watch me every maybe a week, every few months in the summers. And she had this old TV with the VHS. And it was a lot of uh, Smokey and the Bandit, Mortal nice. Kombat. Yes, I mean, pretty. Oh, yeah. that. Mortal and, Kombat? And, uh, dude, like these old Your VHS. Grandma was four, Your just grandma. watching Mortal Kombat. Your grandma was like, <laughs> here's Mortal Kombat, little Brian. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, I didn't remember this movie being in 98, actually. And also, I didn't remember it being, I thought it was funnier, and all the hospital stuff, I thought was a lot more of it. I didn't remember the intro. I didn't remember the cabin turning into, the, yeah, at the end of it taking so long. I just thought it was way more zany. So to rewatch it, um, the funny part still slapped to me. But it, yeah, I get why people don't love it as much this long after, I guess. It, it got dragged on back then, too. Like you um, alluded mm. to the response from uh, the real life Patch Adams. The critical oh, community yep. really didn't cozy up to it it's, back then either. Well, it's because this is coming. Like I said, like this is coming at 98, which is really like the end of this run of like these types of stories that are family driven. Yeah. Like it's this kind of story is going to take a pivot in four years. and. Think about this movie in comparison to something like A Beautiful Mind. Like, they actually share a lot of DNA, but A Beautiful Mind is like, that's a movie for adults. It's very serious. That's not, there's no comedy in that. Right. You don't take your little kids to go see that. This, you could take a kid to go see, and, like, he might get kind of antsy in the second half of the movie, but, like, at least he's having fun right. in the Robin Williams bits. Yeah, but no, the bits are effective. Um, I did want to say, because I think that where this movie really starts to pick up for the first time is uh, when Patch meets Truman and it might Philip be... Philip Seymour Hoffman. No, well, I oh, thought that Philip Seymour glasses. Hoffman. Is that not mm -hmm. Truman? That's not Truman. Uh, no, Truman's like his best buddy that he like... His, oh, his friend. yeah. Uh, Philip Seymour mm -hmm. Hoffman is fucking wasted in this movie. I have beef <laughs> with how they deployed Philip Seymour Hoffman. Um, no, but he meets, he meets Truman and they like bond over this connection with people and everything. And then one of the best scenes of the movie is they go to the meat packaging convention <laughs> and the amount of meat puns. I just wrote down a few of them. Um, my favorite one is a uh, meat miss meat, which is just like 
fucking this woman who's like six seven with like shoulders that you could just yeah fucking big broad yeah um the 23rd annual meat race where mm-hmm. they just take like logs of meat and just like push them down like they're in yeah. like a wood stock derby like they're in fucking boy scouts that's a big kansas um, thing right brian yes. y'all have meat derbies do you, have, do you race meats in <laughs> kansas no, that that scene cracked me up. I didn't remember it either. So <laughs> uh, shanks for oh the memories. Gosh. That's whenever Robin gives a rousing speech about eating cow. And we're just chanting, eat cow, eat cow, which as someone who's trying to go vegan for the month of mm-hmm. October, uh, it did trigger me a little bit. But uh, yeah, just let let the random man go up on stage and give a speech at the meet. No, well, he, he had on he had on a little white lab coat mm. and he was just like cool which i do another note because that scene leads right into him just thinking like well i have a lab coat now it does say meat packaging but if i just cross my arms i can sneak my way into hospitals they just sell lab coats right like just plain <laughs> blank white lab coats why was he wearing the meat packaging lab coat and he's like i should stick with this one if this, i'm gonna go to the hospital this movie is about how white men can get away with whatever they want <laughs> you can literally just wander into a hospital and if you just and have nobody will ask on, any like, questions i guess so yeah. <laughs> he's got the coat on like i don't know i don't know what you want me to do here like if you if they would have seen a man of color like fucking around in the children's cancer ward <laughs> it have gone very get differently out of <laughs> I don't want to play into that, but it's like I was watching that and like thinking back, I could rile up that meat convention crowd like they were antsy, dude. The group think like, get me up there. I could. I don't know about what, but is this how Trump got elected? Was he just went to meat convention yeah. meat packaging conventions around the country yeah, and just got lit? Um, so we, we yeah. mentioned PSH. Um, you think he's wasted. I think he kind of saves a lot of this movie. Um, I think that there were a lot of scenes where I was like, I mean, I was having fun watching Robin go epic mode, but every time he had a scene with Hoffman, I was like, this works. The drama here works. Like, I don't know, like Hoffman, he's just playing this character. That's very simple. It's just a studious student, medical student. That's just down in his books, trying to do a good job. And he's pissed off that robin is just goofing off all the time and it's a dynamic that works it doesn't feel forced um and i don't know i just was kind of locked into all those scenes and thought that they worked really well what did you think brian psh big fan yeah no i was looking forward to his scenes and i yeah no i know what you mean about it flowing um there's this comfortableness to like scenes with good actors that are just sitting in it and they're not out of place um small tangent i watched season four of westworld and half or a quarter God of the bless plot, you for that dude i had to get back Jesus. on it i stand okay. the first season like i, I think it was just you and, was i think you and me were the only two yep. people on earth that watched season four <laughs> of westworld <laughs> this is a side tangent the funniest part about westworld this past year was Ernest for like four <laughs> weeks being like guys westworld's back <laughs> It's back. It's good again. It's and then the fun. next week you were like, guys, Westworld might just had its worst episode yet. <laughs> no, <laughs> like not just, only that. I thought, like, let's see if you agree with me, time. Brian. I thought the season finale was the worst episode of television I have seen this year. <laughs> yeah. No, I <laughs> lately I've been a lot more cool about the Game of Thrones finale season. Like I've been fine with it because there's been some bad TV boys. So <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> some stick. Um, it turns out it's hard to end things. Yeah. Well, this yeah. wasn't even an end. This was like it was. Eh, we could end it, maybe. Is there supposed to be a fifth season? Like, is that? It's such a half-assed yeah. end. Jesus. It's Put like the fucking show out of its mem- misery. Just take it in the back and like shoot it in the head. Just, just end. It's this. tough. It's tough. How does how does Westworld tie into Philip Seymour Hoffman? So I think of all the actors that I'll get really, really, really sad about remembering that aren't here anymore. um, He's probably number one. And of all the shows that I was really, really, really high on that could have gone a lot better. Westworld's one 
A and there's not one B. It's put him anywhere, man. He could so, be. So you're saying you would bring back uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman as a robot? Yeah, that's I was what just you're thinking. That's keep it all in the park. Yeah. Season one is everything. Keep it in the park. Keep it a Can, robot. It drama. just be. I want it to. I want it to be in the park, but he's only in Lancaster Dodd mode. Like he's just full of the master <laughs> character, and he's just a cult leader, and mm-hmm. he's just running this world. That's what I want. I honestly, I I think Mitch Roman is the guy's name. He. He gets he gets my my vote as like a formidable member of the PSH Pantheon. Like he wow, that is I don't I I the thing is is PSH he always comes to play. That's the thing. Yeah. Like every performance is worthy of the Pantheon. That's the point. Like he doesn't miss ever. It's my problems aren't with him acting. My problems aren't with any of the actors in this movie. It's just like I don't know. Every character in this movie, like, just felt like it felt like this, like, very, like, poorly sketched outline of a cliche. Yeah. Like, that's just what it is where it's like, well, we have to have this love interest character. And she used to have a whole thing about how, like, she did not have time for love because she's the only woman here in the group and she's got to try really harder than everyone else. And it's like a thing that's like true, but it's like, yes, I guess this is the 90s and this is about as progressive as things get, so we'll include this character. We have the nerdy best friend who's like, oh, uh, Patch, Patch, buddy, I don't know if you can do that. Like, everything is just like such just a cliche. It's like a copy of a copy of a cliche. It's so broad in a way that's like I found endearing whenever it was just trying to be a fun, zany comedy. But whenever I'm supposed to like seriously care about these people and we get into the dramatic elements, I'm like, I so, you're not a character like you are not a person right now. You are not. I'm not watching real people interact with each other. So let's, the fucking I want to talk about the Dean Dean oh, okay. Walcott, um, which. Uh, who's the guy who plays him? Because I Bob swear, Gunton. I could have swore that it was a uh, Philip Baker Hall at first, and maybe it would have been better with Philip Baker Hall. But Bob Gunton, um, just a guy who's like literally thing is just like you're having too much fun, and yeah. I hate that. Well, okay, <laughs> so like it's, <laughs> it's tough because like he kind of has a point a little bit. Like you can't throw hundreds of years of medicine. And 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 you know scientific knowledge but out also, the window. No doctor is just like, yeah, you know what? Fuck the people. <laughs> like honestly, like I don't give a shit. You're a goddamn number to me. Do you hear that? <laughs> I don't care. You're patient three five seven, and that's who you are. You no know, doctor is like openly just that yeah. much of like a monstrous person. Yeah, but but also, like, but also, okay, hold on, Brian. You have a serious medical condition. You go to the doctor and he's like, (laughs) are you going to trust that man to (laughs) give you an assessment of what's wrong with you? I'd much rather have. That's the thing with this whole movie is. Hatch is so fun and he's good with the people that are, you know, could use some fun. But the Philip Seymour Hoffman's not wrong. Right. He's not wrong. And I'd love for him to tell me, I don't know, anything bad. I get I don't know. You know what I mean? It's um I was alluding to this earlier, but like with the whole 22% on Ron Tomatoes, the critical community kind of not buying this movie. Um, our guy, Raj, Roger Ebert and Gene Siskel, I got to I just got to read verbatim what these guys said, because (laughs) they absolutely nailed it. I mean, there's a reason why they are the the OG podcasters. So this is what Roger. So Roger Ebert gave it one and a half stars uh, out of four and said, Patch Adams made me want to spray the screen with Lysol. This movie is shameless. It's not merely a tearjerker. It extracts tears individually by liposuction without anesthesia the film received two (laughs) thumbs down on siskel and eber with particular criticism toward the character of patch who was viewed as overbearing obnoxious and sanctimonious as well as noting that they would never trust a doctor who acted like adams does 
Siskel said, I would rather turn my head and cough than see another moment of Patch Adams again. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Gene Siskel singled it as the worst film of 1998 and gave it his last worst of before his death in 1999. Oh, my God. So I don't. It killed him. The thing is, though, <laughs> I can. I can understand. Like, I, I don't know if I go that far. Like, Jesus, yeah. that is scathing well, in the I highest mean, degree. Because I think they're there getting is, up there. It, they, they were, yeah, they were getting, they, they're old, getting a they're little bit of right yeah. there towards the end. I love them. Um, <laughs> I will say, but I like, well, I don't fully agree with like how much of a takedown they are trying to do on Patch Adams. I do understand where they are coming from because there is an element to this movie where it's like actively a little bit dangerous like there is one line in this movie and i had to write it down because it's whenever it's right after robin gives his whole like anti-capitalistic rant uh to uh free hospital Karen about free hospital in the middle of the night and he says what if we gave people laughs instead of medicine <laughs> uh no dude like that's some that's some anti-vax shit right there like we gotta like fucking reel this back in a little bit my guy like we this is like it's all about kind of, vibes man it's reaching, the body there's like an almost like an anti-scientist uh, agenda <laughs> to part of this of the framing of this movie where it's like all right let's Come on. All right. I'm 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 all for like treating people and everything else like that's cool and fun and golden rules. Nice. And we should be kind to each other. But also like medicine's good, guys. Mm -hmm. Like you should. I Dude. want my doctor to go to medical school before he treats me. <laughs> Call me like fucking crazy. But yeah, there's a part at the end where he's like just mad and yelling at um, I think Philip Seymour Hoffman and uh, before the ladies in the pool of noodles and he Robin's like, you know, of all God's creations, uh, we're the only ones that kill our own species. And I thought like, that's not true. Is it? Yeah, like, that's, that's, that's I think a right. lot of animals yeah. fight. I don't Pray, know. Praying mantis it's, famously. It's literally like called like the animal kingdom is ruthless. Like yeah. it's just a thing of just like animals fucking kill each other, dude. Like that's just the thing that happens. I mean, there was one scene when, Patch is like rattling off a very like scientific description of how laughter helps you release serotonin and increase blood flow to the brain. And I was like, huh, I think I'm going to become a, a <laughs> anarchist right now. I think I'm going to join the free hospital. I think I'm, I'm gonna, signing up. Yeah, I think I'm going to fucking stop going to doctors. Yeah, I think I'm there's going to start making myself laugh. I think I'm gonna there's put a step brothers on repeat and that'll like cure my bronchitis. I think there's a cabin in the woods somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> like that looked like a far walk to get there. And these people would just show up like bandaged and shit. Like, I imagine do, I imagine know. you're you're waiting. Brian, you're you're. You're coming down on hard times, you know, you're you're in between gigs, you don't have health insurance, you got a really bad situation, you know, it's you, you don't know what's going on with you. It's 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 getting real painful to just live and you're trying to go to the clinic and there's a line out the door and you are just doubling over in pain. You can't sit there and wait and a van pulls up. <laughs> and they're like, "Hey, uh, so we have this cabin <laughs> up in the mountains. Uh, how about you hop in and we'll take you. What do you say? What you, what you doing? What you this do, is the, what, what you, you doing? Do this, this is the, what you doing in this episode as you are waiting outside of like a free clinic or at least a cheap clinic yeah, they and turn you away. They're already full. And then Tom, what you do? Uh, not Tom. Um, uh, Patch, Patch, and uh, Truman are just—they're just rolling by. <laughs> Come on, in, get in, hop in. If it's Patch or Truman, dude, I'll jump in. But if it's like I don't know, if it's Monica Potter, you're like, no way. I don't, I don't know about her. I don't know about. I don't her. know. Oh, dude, just on that real fast. Steve, back to Steve Prefontaine, cork neck that in. She's Billy Crudup's wife in Without Limits, the Steve Prefontaine movie. Oh, yeah. But, so, is this the double water. one of the double Prefontaine films we talked yes. about forever ago? Yes. I, uh, 
I mean, I have nothing against her as an actor. I think this. it's time. I think it's time to to talk about uh, Karen Karen um, Fisher. I don't know. See, the problem is, I don't want to be too critical of her. Uh, she I was I dealt a awful. Hand. I don't want to be critical of like who she is as a person. She's probably very nice. Um, she's, it's hard enough to be a female actor in Hollywood. She's really bad in this movie. <laughs> um, it's not entirely her fault. I'm sure you mentioned that she does have some chops in other movies. So like, I trust I'm not that. saying she's an all-star. I just remembered her from Prefontaine. <laughs> so you just remember but her. She, she has she, no credit on like her abilities no. in any way. Okay, Hunter, did, did she do her uh, Please address me it was a bad as Patch role? for the rest of the Patch. episode, please. Yes, yeah. thank Patch you. Adams. Um, thank you very much. Doctor, yes, doctor, please, thank you. Uh, thank doctor. You. Thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> Dr. Lecter. It, was it her doing bad acting or was it just like a bad role? No, that's that's the thing is that I can't could be, be both. too- I can't be too critical of her because for all I know, like, I mean, talk about an outline of an outline of a cliche, like, dear God, that character is, is awful. It's truly terrible. Um, we're supposed to be like, God, she's such a bitch for not wanting to hook up with Robin Williams. Who's 20 years older yeah. than her. Yeah. Literally look it up. Uh, they were born 20 years yeah. apart from each other. And she's like it's the, tough. she's like the fucking hard ass who won't like, hook up with robin williams the moment when she kisses him is is real tough i was like oh no yeah we can't be doing this. um this is not what needs to happen right now it's not great um going off of her can we please talk about larry creepy weirdo well larry. okay so this is all this is, this is like, all connected this is a thing he's the one who shows up to the hospital and it is i like okay so a little bit background we're getting into it we're fully in the meat of the movie spoilers whatever it's patch adams it came out fucking 25 years ago you're fine um larry shows up to this house and he's like all sketched out he's like i've been having some dark thoughts man um, well let's let's back up a little bit more so you mentioned the love interest subplot that alone is like one of the worst parts of the movie like anytime they're advancing the subplot it's like what the fuck are we doing then they introduce the free hospital subplot, which is like, what the fuck are we doing? Then you find out it's a real thing. And it's like, all right, they got to do the real story. But we're getting further and further away from the stuff that works the best in yeah, the movie, which is just Robin with kids doing bits. Exactly. So now we're in deep into the second half of the movie with this free hospital, this cabin in the mountains and now this love interest plot blossoming and what's starting to happen here is that she she is embracing the methodology mm -hmm. that patch is trying to explore which is kindness laughter yeah. acceptance be kind to others like always don't be judgmental take in anyone and help them right a great message that should be pretty cut and dry should just be a good message that you just take home is that like we just want to help anyone no matter the cause um larry fucking kills karen <laughs> it's just so out of nowhere out of absolute nowhere it's so it muddies the message of this movie so much because it's, it's like it's, it's an insane it's like, move wait so the whole message of this movie is just like be kind to others treat other people you want to be treated don't judge people always like give people a chance and view them as human beings but i guess not if they're a fucking like creepy weird dude then it's like fine it's like don't be judgmental unless like they're really fucking weird though and then like don't don't treat them what is the point to that? Like, I was, I like ha kind of had to take a beat. Like yeah. I paused the movie <laughs> for a second. Just I was like wrapping my brain, my brain for like, what does this mean? <laughs> like what, what is so, he trying to say now? I, I think that what happens is we, we meet Larry. He walks, he wanders into the hospital. He's talking about how he has dark thoughts and right away. She is skeptical of him. She gets, she catches a vibe. And she makes the choice to go to his house by herself. Just like, lady, what are you doing? Um, and that, you know, she ends up not living through that night. But I think that what's happening there is that this movie's trying to grapple with this idea of trying to sell you on Patch Adams, not just as a person, but as like a scientific mind 
a medical mind and it has to introduce this antithetical force to him and it but you know there's surfaces. already so many antithetical no forces. that's what i'm saying there's it, too many there's too many villains in this right no it's surfaces many bad that, that force surfaces in multiple ways the dean the roommate and now larry with this idea that like you can't do everything the way you want to do it because it's not going to work out that way there are certain things that you can't treat the way you want to treat them and it's ex- incredibly sloppy but i think that that was maybe the intention is like showing like there are problems out there that require an actual medical approach an actual scientific approach and not just funny bits uh i think that maybe that's the intention what do you think brian that's the thing it's like every time it goes back to what robin could have gotten wrong or where uh the message might have been murky on the ethics of it all for sure um there's that scene kind of middle of the movie at the diner i think where there's the guys that um hear them uh the doctors at the uh, at the bar talking about school i think and then the local people just start talking about their health insurance problems mm-hmm. or their issues and stuff and that's it's, when he gets the idea for the free hospital yeah yeah and that's one of the scenes where it's like I, that might as well be reality because that's there's something everyday here stuff. yeah 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 there's but some meat on the bone here oh it's a tough execution it really is so it's incredibly what? flimsy i just don't understand it yeah. why isn't the movie just that why isn't that he's just this like lovable doctor who like he there isn't an evil dean or a mean roommate or a murderous patient yeah it's just it's him getting beat down by society. Right. Like it doesn't need to be like that. You have all these like very, very rough caricatures of people in this movie that are working against Robin. You could just have like, this is the way that the healthcare system in America works. That's and enough that's of a the villain. problem. Yeah. That is the villain. The villain yeah. is, is America. Right. Like that's it. I just, there's just so much muddying the waters in this movie that like it kind of did. By the end, especially because that whole big scene of Karen dying, this big love interest that we have in here. Let's add another trope on here with the dead lover trope. Um, That's not the end of the movie. We still have another like 25 (laughs) minutes because there's another conflict that now he's getting kicked out of school. Yeah, he needs to graduate. And it reached a point where I was just like, (laughs) I was like annoyed by the end of this movie where I was like, dude, I was having like, it what kind happened? of it, it made me mad just because like this movie was fun. Yeah. At one point it was fun, and it just like the momentum got like it got fucking drained out of this movie in like such just yeah. a a very clumsy way that I don't know. I don't know if it's a thing where they were like the first part of the movie was more of the off script, not based on a real life thing. So they could have more fun with the storytelling. They could do more bits. They could do the paper mache legs for the gynecologist convention. They could do the meat packers convention. Like they could do these fun things. And then they're like, Oh shit, this is based on a true story. We have to keep this thing under two hours. Let's cram this all in right now. Mm -hmm. But like, Pick your spots, my guy. Like, uh, you don't got to go out there and just keep jacking up uh, threes for midcourt, like just trying to get in all of the facts yeah. at one time. Like, pick your spots a little bit. Well, so to that Based point, on a true story, you don't got to tell the whole thing. You brought this up earlier, Brian, the, the fact that the love interest is based on a real person. So he actually did lose a real friend in a very similar way that was murdered. But to take that, part of the true story and turn it into the love interest that just doesn't click with me like why why did this movie need a love interest you know and if you want to include that part of the story of his friend being murdered it just seems like you're doing a disservice to that by making it the love interest because you're not i didn't buy the love interest i don't know if anybody (laughs) out there that of the two hundred million dollars, kept they, coming they back because of the love interest. They have zero chemistry together. It's it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. Um, okay, so the end of the movie. You mentioned he gave this big speech all about how he should be able to graduate because 
da da da. There's a, another way to go about things. And they're like, oh, you broke the law and treated patients in a cabin in the woods, but whatever you're Robin Williams. We'll let you have this. Who gives a fuck? Um, and then he graduates without uh, any clothes on except his graduation robe. <laughs> so you can't actually do that in real life. Like you can't legally, <laughs> legally. I, I just remember like, um, should I? And like, I put the robes on like in high school, I think. And there's like three feet where it's like, you, you're going to see your, it doesn't matter. It's just I thought about that before. So <laughs> that doesn't it doesn't quite work. All right. <laughs> Shall we get to the cage of Um Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's just get to the cage of okay. But I will say first, I think that the biggest disease of all is indifference. Oh, clap. Clap, 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 Thank clap. You. Okay. The first cage of is um oh my god do i have to pull my notes up i totally blank it's uh best robin oh best robinism best oh. robinism come on okay it's easy I, this, this one's, one's so easy. easy it's him with the kids yeah. the very first scene of him with the kids the just rocks. kids it's him putting on the nose for the first time which i will say i mean speaking about maybe it is one of those things where i never actually physically saw this movie as a kid but i have seen this poster like 10,000 times in my yeah. life. Like it is such a classic blockbuster video poster. Yeah, with the red nose. Yeah, just Robin with the red nose that it's it's so like a burned image in your brain. And just that whole scene is amazing of him like putting on like the bed pails as like shoes and like as a little hat again and just anybody else doing bits. It's just him doing like the best Robin Robinisms. Anybody else that just walks into a fucking cancer ward and puts his feet in the fucking bed pails you you get arrested yeah. like you're going <laughs> you're going to jail okay so any other best robinism when i think his name's alan rickman no not alan rickman who's the pirate from dodgeball redhead voice actor guy um or alan hmm but he's in the circle of guys that are all like riffing about the guy with his arm stuck up. Oh, and Robin Williams. He's like, uh, he's like, uh, Rip, how do you say Rip hi torn. to Hitler? Is oh. he in? Is he in that? What is it? I I Patches pointed out. I I pointed out. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, that, yeah, that's totally it. <laughs> yeah. Is he in this movie? He's the guy I, that I, Robin. He says the exact same joke back, and he's like, yeah, he's like, how does Hitler say hi? And he's like, how do you say hi to Hitler? Or something. Uh yeah, because yeah. Alan Tudyk, Alan Tudyk is in that circle too. Yeah, he's a that. That's, yeah, he's a that guy. Um, I don't I, think that's Rip Torn. Yeah, I, I didn't clock Rip Torn, but it looks like him. It though. looks like it him. does look like him. I know that Alan Tudyk. I also saw that. I was like, oh wow, look at that. I, I, I totally for Alan forgot. Tudyk to be a part of this movie, and he's I just not. Totally forgot about that <laughs> scene, but that is a little taste of what that's, you'll see later yeah. in the movie. It just doesn't work in that scene. It's I mean, that scene is like fine for it. Is it's just like tonally, you're like, is this a drama? Is this a comic? Like, what are we what is here? going it's on? Like in this like weird no man's land where you're still like feeling out the movie and what the vibes of it are. I think I would like that scene now after watching the movie as a whole and knowing that it like is funny, at least at first. Because at first I was like, is this yeah. like like I was getting big one flew over the cuckoo's nest vibe. So I was like, is he like, is Robin Williams like actually insane? <laughs> like, is he, is he like, is it like one of those like Jack Nicholson situations where he's like, I'm not supposed to be here, but like really probably shouldn't be there. Um, <laughs> I also wanted to shout out the scene where he finally breaks through with the, that one patient when he wears the angel costume. Yes, I, that was my nominee on here of just making like death idioms back and forth. Like, that was great. That was really nice. I like that scene a lot. Bear you ass up. So we got a place to park my bike. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one that, that's like a great 20, one. That's, that's the one that's that stuck with me, dude. I start cracking up sometimes. Um, <laughs> also the, the fucking cervix. I, that's here. coming up in the best, the best moment. Okay. I let's think. yeah, let's get to it. I think like if we're not, if we're not double dipping and picking the same scene for best Robinism, then the scene of like 
where it's such like a fuck you to the dean yeah. where the dean right before is just like oh i'm choosing you for this prestigious honor to like prepare do a bunch of the fucking school. manual work and uh then he sets up the paper mache legs <laughs> well, so if, if anyone is just listening to this episode and hasn't been staring into the the depths of this uh <laughs> the screenshot on the video um basically what happens in this movie is a convention of gynecologists arrives at the the medical school and they are greeted by a giant pair of paper mache legs um that are propped up like the legs of someone at a gynecologist exam where the door into the school is the vagina and it says welcome gynos at your cervix um and it's an incredible moment it is it is a truly cinematic moment in this film yeah worthy of the best moment i i'm trying to think if i have a I just immediately I just jumped to the make a wish kids. But mm -hmm. what kind of fucks me up about that is that they all show up at the end of the big speech oh, and they and all put on their red noses. I'm just like, get the fuck out of that, here. That what are we doing? Sucks. It's, it's a bad speech. It's it's really yeah. it's a bad. It's him telling doctors like, guys, stop learning things. Go out and talk to people instead. Oh. It's a bad, uh, bad speech scene. Uh, I have a new category for you what? guys. Um, it's called scene that gave me sensory issues. Mm. Uh, and it's Robin Williams and old woman getting in a pool of spaghetti. Oh, um, that was incredibly it, like, disturbing. It's one of those things that like I could feel like, you know how like al dente spaghetti feels like just on your fingers. Imagine that feeling soaking all over your Ugh. entire body. Like Ugh. that I'm, shit like it made me like. It gave me sensory overload issues. It made me want to like strip off my clothes and take a shower. A real, a real pool of noodles would be like a mattress. It would be hard. You wouldn't be able to. You want like a pool of ramen, of like uncooked ramen to just jump right onto. The, the pool that we see in this movie is not a pool of noodles. It is a pool of liquid that has noodles in it. I... It looked almost like they boiled the noodles in there. Like there's a lot of <laughs> excess liquid. If you like, if you look at it too hard, you can see like, how do they get all these noodles in here? A lot of the noodles are like really cut up. So it's almost like they like chop the noodles, like how you like serve a small child spaghetti when they can't do the twisty. I want like, the oral history of <laughs> what crew member had to figure yeah. out. Who is told, give me a pool of I, noodles. I hope it's just like one guy who just has like, uh, they have like a six ounce uh, <laughs> pot at their house. And they're just like cooking noodles <laughs> oh, no. one at a time. For like a week there. and a half. Yeah. <laughs> just so slow. Just one guy, one fucking intern from a Full PA. Sail <laughs> who got hired onto this thing and has like a credit mashed in between 10,000 other noodle names. Noodle master. <laughs> The noodle boy. Oh my god. Let's do a quick Google. Of who is the noodle boy for uh this movie? Um I think how did they make the noodles in Patch Adams? Um it doesn't say. Oh, that's that's disappointing. We should do the oral history for Patch Adams, just just for the noodles. That's all that I care about. We should do an oral history for like the best use of a food that took place on or off screen, because it's also how we can incorporate the hot yogurt. There's the, the Nick Cage hot yogurt. Like we can bring this all full circle. Yeah, but the like hot yogurt brain. was all about pleasure. I mean, was this about pleasure? Did it this was. old lady have a kid? <laughs> I was like, is this, she? Does she needed to orgasm I, <laughs> in the noodles before she died? Robin's like, I insist, I won't do this scene unless you're <laughs> orgasming. Um, oh my god. Okay. Hold on a second. So there's a Reddit thread, r slash uh, shower thoughts. Uh, Ellen Albertini Dow is the woman uh, that plays in Patch Adams, fantasizing about swimming in noodles. She's 101 years old and has outlived Robin Williams. Oh, wow. Oh, wait, but this was posted eight years ago, so, so. I doubt she is. All right. <laughs> um, at least she'll have that fantasy forever. There's that um another new category. Uh 
seeing that made me say, oh, fuck off. Um, there's a few nominees in this movie, but I think the winner, we've talked about a bunch of them. I think the winner for this one goes to uh, Robin Williams about to jump off the side of a cliff and kill himself, but then he sees a CGI butterfly. Oh, um, also, and he talks to God. He's like, God, what should I do? He's like, is this what you did? You invent man and you give them pleasure and then you take it all away. And I'm like, yeah, this is what we're getting like back into like the melodrama here a little bit from the very beginning of this movie. What are we doing right now? Brian, did you pick a, a best moment? What's your favorite moment? Is it the cervix? Honestly, the cervix one. Yeah, <laughs> um, I it's personally yeah, no, honestly, it's, it's hilarious. Gag. Um, it is. It is honestly hilarious. I I cracked up. <laughs> I want the oral history on how they made this. Like he, that's another. It looks one. real. What know. if it's I the mean, same how... thing as the noodle mm-hmm. boy? Oh, the noodle boy had to keep. He was boiling pot noodles, and whenever he was like, while the noodles were boiling, he was just like busy taking up his entire living room with fucking paper mache. All right, if anyone is watching this that worked on the set of patch Adams. please we need the stories come on the pod we bought a mic at gmail.com sugar ray's already reached out to us about Father's yeah. <laughs> Day, so we need we need another one i want to know one. how did they make the noodles i don't know how did they make the paper mache uh just just download it all let us know it all um okay we did a, we touched on this a little bit but fellas wyd what would you do so we talked about like what would happen if you were a patient that was approached by Patch Adams and company to go to the free hospital. But is there another in here? Like, what would you do if you're Philip Seymour Hoffman and you're trying to study and there's a room full of balloons when you walk into <laughs> Honestly, your bedroom? <laughs> I would probably handle it the same way Philip Seymour Hoffman did. That's it. That's an insane. That's an insane <laughs> thing to walk into. Just all balloons in your bedroom. Like 10,000. <laughs> I, I was watching that, trying to do the math in my head, like Eminem's in a jar. Like, wait, I, yeah. <laughs> I think 10,000 is, is, is a lot. I think it's probably closer to a thousand than 10. Well, how I'll, big I'm it's a dorm know. room. It can't be. The thing <laughs> is that this is according to just the size space on here. Either they took out the beds because we see there's like two twin size beds. It's like a pretty standard dorm. Yeah. Um, they had to take out the beds to fit a the amount of balloons that we see there and like be the amount of people that we see there. There's like 27 people in this fucking room, yeah, which it's, it's a whole that party. in itself is like that's that's cramming up the entire room. And then you also have a thousand balloons in here taking up all the space. Yeah, if I was Philip Seymour Hoffman, I'd be kind of pissed. Too. I'd be, yeah. I mean, t- talk about how you know, kind of intense and and shitty his college experience has been so far as a medical student. Then he has to deal with this fucking shit. Be fucking pissed too. Um, here's another one. Uh, you are the parents of, or the family of the real life, uh, Karen, the real life guy who this is. And uh, you see your dead relative, your dead son. Oh, I forgot case, about the funeral scene. Now depicted as a like a, a woman love interest for Robin Williams. And B, you get to just see just a very poorly handled death in Tough. general to relive that experience. What you doing? I'd sue <laughs> okay. for damages. I wish Patch Adams should have sued and taken at least some of the fucking $200 million money from this. I just, I can't believe that the actual real Gazoontite Institute did not see a dollar from the making of this movie. That's, yeah. that's a bad beat. Yeah. Like that's tough. At least throw them like a token million dollars. Like that's, that's so nothing to you. Just something to just be like, Oh yeah. You know, it was really helpful to do this. Even like Robin Williams, like, throw just a little bit of money his build, way. I build guarantee the hospital. if this movie would have been a hit it would have been Oscar contender Robin Williams would have like done the publicity tour and like yeah. given to the hospital and everything wasn't but this movie that. came out wasn't a hit with critics and he's like ah, I'm just gonna keep the 21 mil yeah well uh, patch the real patch he kind of backtracked his comments a little bit once Robin passed 
<laughs> There's like, a note. Like all people do whenever yeah. you say something bad about a now <laughs> dead person. Like, I don't know if I really buy that. He, uh, there's a note me. in the Wikipedia about how he, uh, when Robin passed, he was like, I'm very thankful about the film and his portrayal. And we're doing great. You know, we're still going. The Gazuntai Institute still kicking. And, uh, you know, thanks to, thanks to Robin. Um, okay. So we do this category sometimes. I figured I'd bring it up just in case anyone has any thoughts. The day after, what happens the day after this movie? He graduates medical school. I mean, obviously, it's a true story, so we know what happens the day after. But in the context of the story told in the movie, is he investigated for the murder of Karen? <laughs> murder suicide? Is he implicated? No, well, because years pass from then, because we determine he is a first year student oh, in this I movie. So it's another time jump three years. Uh, um, I think even after that time point, they're still sneaking back in to steal supplies. Oh, no <laughs> doubt. Uh, over yeah. and over. And That's over. a great call. They are 100% doing that. But the nurses are cool with it because the nurses are like, oh, this is the only doctor who's ever just been not the worst human being in the world to me. <laughs> like that one you nurse, everything you want. <laughs> the, the one nurse that they keep cutting to. I was like, what? This is such like a stock movie character right here. <laughs> it's another thing where like it's so close to saying something about how like that whole idea of like how nurses, nurses are on the front lines. Yeah, nurses do all yeah. the work. You spend 80 anytime that you go to a doctor's visit, you spend 80 percent of your time dealing with the nurse and 20 percent with the doctor, if not more than that. To be perfectly honest, it's usually like 90, 95% with the nurse. They're the right. one asking all the questions, doing the preliminary tests, and the doctor, you're lucky if they make fucking eye contact with you for more than 45 seconds in a lot of cases. Like unless they're doing bits. Unless they're doing fucking yeah, bits. Yeah, they're trying out their stand-up routine. I've only ever been to been referred to as like patient 305 right. whenever I go to a doctor's office, though, which is my problem. We, uh, we'd be remiss not to uh, mention the boner joke. <laughs> Oh, with, with the, the skeleton. skeleton. <laughs> There's some good bits. Was, yeah. Look, the thing hey, is, I don't need medicine because I got funny bits. With the cast and with, I don't know, 1998, I don't remember all the movies coming out that year. Could it have just been like a A++ hit if it wasn't some true story? Same people, same everything. Put it yeah. in the hospital. That's a great I mean, point. I, I remember it being really, really good. And I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I think I that know. you're right, though. I think that that's the problem with the second half of the movie is that it's like it's we contrived. have to cram in the real life shit where if this is just an original story, then we can kind of we can stay in this like fun pretend world. And maybe we can have like some we can tie in some societal uh, like antagonistic forces, whatever. They can be generic. They can be in one person. Uh but so like a little bit of conflict. You don't have to have it be like all of these different pieces from this person's life all crammed in here in a short amount of time. Excuse me there. I think Talk to I think I think you're totally right because I think this movie immediately becomes so much better if A, you don't have the love interest, B, you don't have the whole free hospital subplot, and C, you amplify all the fun stuff that clearly everyone loved the most about this movie that's the reason why it was a hit and you dig into those characters let's get to know the patients let's get to know the nurses let's explore those stories that's how you fix it yeah um right. okay good robin or bad robin i think this is great robin he's doing a good job yeah. the the movie i don't blame robin for yeah, anything it's not his any fault. problems with this movie what it's do you not think your fault. it's not your, uh, it's great not your robin. fault it's not your fault it's not your fault. It's not your fault. How it's many Robins me. out of 10? How are you feeling on the Robin? Mm. Here? The most uh, clear category. of <laughs> Yeah, <this is> yeah <laughs> re-listening to some of these episodes, <laughs> this wavering it's... rating. <laughs> I don't I, know. I, no, I, I, yeah. I'm telling you, like, we need to pivot the Robin scale to, like, how endearing he is versus, like, how, like, zany over the top. Just because, like, he is zany in this movie, but it's not the cage scale. Like it's just, it's a completely right. different thing. Like Robin at the end of the day, he's known for just being like this, like lovable, like he's your favorite yeah. uncle. Like well, that's, it's that's what that I've said before. Character. It's there's a lot of different flavors that go into it. It's not just one thing. 
because he can do a lot of different things that add to what makes a Robin movie more Robin, you know? I, I don't know. What do you think, Brian? No, I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking of him like the zaniness in the Peter Pan movie he's did or he did. Hook. Um, Hook, thank you. It's he doesn't have that like manic craziness uh, to his humor in this one. And I was rewatching it and I thought he felt like zany, but like tamed. And it just like like they were trying to make it a pretty serious kind of big time movie and didn't want to be too slapstick at all. But when they let him riff and have his scenes, dude, floored it. So yeah, I say eight out of 10 Robins. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of there, too. I'm kind of in that range, even though to me, this movie's more like a four. Um, <laughs> he is so good. Like, yeah, the movie this movie. tanks despite how good he is. Yeah, it's a Robin movie. I, you know, there's so. entire stretches where he's just riffing. He's just going off. He's full epic mode. It's mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, you can just and then tell he's standing on the edge of a cliff. <laughs> you can just tell they just put him in a room with the cancer kids and turn the camera on and let him just go off. Yeah, that's and great. That's, and that is where the movie shines. I, I, I'm i around like an 8.5 for that exact reason, because I think that he is like deeply charismatic, except for the moments where it's like sad, melancholic Robin, like just looking yeah. out long. Love, in love interest, Robin. Yeah, like that kind of stuff doesn't work. That's not as charming. But I, for the most part, when it's just Robin being Robin, this movie sings. It's the best part. All right. Final category, re couch. Where do you put Nicolas Cage in this movie? In the Philip Seymour Hoffman role. You lose PSH, really? I want uh, Truman. I want him to be like serious. Oh, I like that. I like, like this. Him as Truman. Oh man! But <laughs> I honestly like Truman, and I can't remember what I've seen him and things from. But I don't, I don't know. There's I only a couple. Do you recognize options. that guy? I don't. I don't think I've ever seen him before. Don't I'd probably put. I'd probably put Cage as Larry. He's the murderer. <laughs> he just shows up in one scene. He's a bit of Doctor Karen, I don't he's feel playing, so good. Playing the piano, <laughs> the very just ominously oh. playing the piano in his home. Come on in, and then just fucking murders her. And you're like, what the fuck? Is Nick Cage in this movie just a murderer? Um, see, I think that he would be fun as like. It would be kind of a different flavor of Cage. But what if Nick Cage was just like stuck up like nerdy guy with glasses? He's just like, you're just I'm just trying to do my my studying here. OK, yeah, Patch funny. Hunter. Like that's that's what I want Nick Cage doing in this movie. Batting like, around the, the balloons. There's the one scene. Yeah. Oh, you know, he would bat it like pew, pew. <laughs> he dropped the camera. It's gone. That's what I do want uh, Cage doing in this movie. Also, that one scene where PSH does kind of blow up a little bit, like, oh, or uh, so good. Cage would have had some fun in that scene. Uh, I yeah, it's tough to lose him, but no, that he would kill it. He would kill yeah. it. How how do we feel about a uh, Patch Adams remake in twenty twenty two? Um, who do we it. who do we got? What do you think, Brian? John Ham. John Ham. Really? The guy is hilarious, and I'm very biased. I love Interesting. John. Interesting. Well, but, that that still keeps the know. problem of he's going to be 20 years older than all the other <laughs> oh, students. Christ! It just breaks. Okay, the, yeah, yeah. You can't. Oh man, that's that's so tough. That's so okay, tough. I I, why did they do that? That's such a terrible choice. <laughs> I hate just, when they the, do that in movies, man. They just shoehorn yeah. in a, a an older man into a college age uh, love story, and it just yeah. does not does yeah, not work. It just, it just doesn't. But work. John Hamm, he's 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 got the right level of comedic chops. He's got the right level of charisma. He's equally hairy. He's a pretty, he's a fairly <laughs> he hairy a, He's a hairy guy. We, look, we love hairy guys in yeah. Hunter. He also so needs the, that. he needs the work. I mean, those, those progressive <laughs> commercials can't be paying all the bills. Hey, he's in, uh, confess Fletch. Does not He's self-funded or he helped. Fu- hey, you know, I was re-listening to the Fern Bully episode. Back. And I remember y'all saying at one point, like there isn't really a modern day Robin Williams, like some yeah. catch all. It's, but we also his whole thing is the career of it, right? And it's, 
he changed quite a bit, but there is that through line of Robin. So I don't really know who nowadays would be. It, it, it varies. It varies from role <laughs> to role. Yeah, we bring up Jack Black a lot. I, right. I don't know. I think I think you really have to you'd have to put someone younger in there. I so maybe it's just going off of what this director did. And maybe I'm biased because of that. But and it's still it's less of an age gap. And I'm not going to worry about like the timing and the year that this movie takes place. But like we've seen Eddie Murphy with kids be fun and do bits. We've seen him have chemistry and like have do more of the dramatic side to things, too. I could see Eddie Murphy in like a role like this. Like you still keep the fun. You don't lose the whimsy of it. Mm -hmm. You lessen that age gap down a bit. You know, I could see it. I think that's perfect, man. No yeah. joke. Definitely not 2022 20, Eddie Murphy, though. No. 98, we, 98 Eddie Murphy. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm talking about if we're making this in 1990. Yeah. Then that's who you could go for. Um, okay. Any hmm. final thoughts on Patch Adams? I know you had some stray notes. Brian. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> meandering things. You do not see his forearms till one hour and 13 minutes in. <laughs> He's wearing these weird ass long sleeve shirts the whole movie you, up until you then. Clocked it. I love that you clocked it. I paused that. it. I'm like, man, there <laughs> like, it hey, is. Forearms. Boy, <laughs> yeah, there I it is. See them forearms. Shit. What's the scene? What's the scene? It's just like a cut to maybe three years in, and it's just the whole star is wearing sleeves. these long sleeves. Suddenly short sleeves. <laughs> yep. Yep. Suddenly. And I'm like, ho, 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 wah, wah. Look at those. That's incredible. Oh, God. Um, what else? Uh, Actually, no, I already covered it. That's all. Any final thoughts, Hunter? Um, no, uh, just that the biggest disease of all is indifference. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. This is a movie that I didn't have a bad time watching a lot of this movie. It's just the end of it left such like a bad taste in my mouth that i feel like i'm coming across very negative on this review just because yeah so much i think that this movie had a lot of potential and i think that always like frustrates me whenever i watch a movie like this where i'm like god we were so close yeah like we it's right there all the seeds were there and you just fumbled the bag you just you threw the ball on fourth and two well, the they were line. they like, were you clearly just, you didn't gotta do it they were clearly handed a book that the real patch adams wrote about his own life and they didn't do enough to make it work as a movie i think they stuck too close to what yeah. that the story that that book probably tells and you can't you can't hold these biographies or, or autobiographies as as bibles when adapting a, it to a movie yeah. you have to make changes you have to and it's tough because, like, if you're calling the movie, the title of the movie is the name of the person, you're immediately putting yourself in a tough position. But it's not like the guy was thankful that <laughs> yeah, it didn't work they out. stuck so close. You know? I, uh, um, we should also, one final note, um, is that Drew actually is not here today because he did get kicked off the pod for excessive happiness. Oh, excessive um, <laughs> So I, I thought it was, I that thought it was because of realms. I for, thought we were still bringing for up the realms. Listener, well, it's because I brought up about excessive happiness realm. Oh, fuck. And I just it was the R word. I shouldn't have brought that up. And now he's just gone for uh, he's uh, he's off in his own realm. And we can't we have to be very careful with the realms <laughs> with the realms. <laughs> we, can't, we can't say the realm word. Um, yeah. So Patch Adams, uh, I'll give another shout out here to the dvd so really happy with you're my giving a shout out to the dvd it's not like we're like you're giving the dvd to a listener or anything like well that. you're you just know, giving a shout out to the fact that you own a dvd of patch adams if, you're giving if, yourself a shout out if if you want to to watch the film maybe just go to your local goodwill and see if they have the collector's edition with the fold out I bet this is available at a local library yeah. or somewhere. No, you you got to get the fold out. I mean, they, look, Tom uh, Shad Yak signed it, and he's he's looking through a little director uh, eye eyesight thing. Cool. You know? I'd put that in a shadow box. Frame it. Ooh. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> read I'm gonna read this uh, this whole little mini essay. 
on here. Not right now. After after the pod like, is Are you going to read this right no. now? In my, in my like own time. Space. In my own time. I'm just saying just in general, just some light reading. Um, but uh, yeah, that's Patch Adams, Robin Williams. The series continues. Thank you so much, Brian, for coming on the show. Any parting words, anything you want to let the people know, any any football teams uh, on the horizon that you you're rooting about for? Your Chiefs, how your Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl this year? Well, really, you know, donate to your local rescue shelters. This is Mikey. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, Bro, yeah, baby. my girl got Little him a one month before. Baby. Here's your oh. Mikey. Damn, camera, come on. He's okay. He's camera shy sometimes. That is so cute. There we go. Sorry. Um, but yeah, no, it's funny, man. I am neck deep in college football and NFL football and fantasy. Um, little projects to stay busy. Honestly, I'm hyped for the rest of the Robin Williams series. Um, there's a movie he did called The Best of Times with Kurt Russell. And I threw it a little, little meme about football teams on the Discord. You got the replacements, Keanu Reeves. The bad boyfriend from the office is the deaf receiver. John Favreau's in it. Um, but yeah, it's the best at times. It's him and Kurt Russell. And it's definitely worth y'all doing like a little mini episode about because it's a rough watch, but it's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny. And 86. Dude, they they it's a small town obsessed with the high school football teams. It starts with like a 10 minute documentary about the history of America in that town. <laughs> It's like bad magic and bad juju and stuff. It's weird, but then everyone's still around town and they replay a football game 10 years later. So you yeah, guys I, should check it out. Okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to fill in the gaps of uh a lot of the the stuff we're skipping over in the series. I mean, we're covering a lot, but I oh, yeah. am doing a, a, a little personal yeah. project of hopefully watching every single Robin Williams movie. So we'll God see how close you. I get to that. I know, I know, I know. So uh, thank you so much, it. Brian, for coming on the show. Mm-hmm. I know we'll have you on again soon. Um, and thank you for watching and listening. Please be sure to rate, review, subscribe, like, and comment, follow, and let us know what you thought of Patch Adams. We will be back with Bicentennial Man. Oof. Never seen it. You've seen Excited. that, Brian? Ever seen Bi- Bicentennial Man? Ooh. Maybe no? off and on on cable, a couple commercials in the middle. You know, it's funny. Speaking I need to of, watch it. Speaking of classic posters, this is a movie that like, I just, I've never seen this movie, but like the whole poster of like right. the half the silhouetted split robot, face, yeah. split face is like a burned image in my childhood we're, brain. We're in a bit of a rough spot in quality wise in this series. <laughs> and I'm hoping something makes it bounce back. I don't is think it, this we might one, have to wait until Insomnia for yeah. a bounce back Robin movie. I, I, I don't think this is one. This one's going to be it. So still hoping for it. Um, also, stick around for ketchup and uh, a little bit of a roundup of some awards films. Mm-hmm. We're have, getting into awards season, baby. Yeah. It's so the most it's wonderful not, time of the year. It's not just Robin all the time right now. We're, we're still giving you our career arc series, but it's getting into that wonderful time of the year. So stick around for that and we'll see you next time. Thanks again, Brian. Peace out. Peace. Love you. Bye-bye. Love you too. Bye.